So I guess I'll just get started with, the, with it then. Um, so the title of this talk is Navigating Maps, uh, Different Map Functions in Closure. Um, and before I get started with the meat of the presentation, as promised, I'll do a quick introduction about myself. My name is Paul. I'm from Tokyo, um, or I live in Tokyo, I should say. I'm from, from California. And uh, I got into Closure actually uh, when I was living in Berlin, and I went to the meetup there. And I felt like the dumbest person in the room, and I figured that uh, yeah, there's something to it. Um, so that's that's where I developed some interest. Um, and yeah, so I use it now. It's uh, for my company Elvor, and uh, we make software that helps uh, venture capital firms uh, stay on top of the hiring behavior of the different portfolio companies that they've invested in. Um, and if you don't know what that means, that's okay. We're just going to take a small look at a small subset. Uh, of what uh, that entails. Uh, so I'll just jump right into the problem slide. All right. So basically, uh, I had a, a database, and within that database, uh, I have a, a job posting table. Um, and my goal is to be able to turn the, the rows of that job posting table into a report. And uh, maybe this isn't applicable to everyone, but I think just as a generalization, uh, it's all about just turning a list into a tiny report of its contents. Um, so if you take a look at the bottom left here, oh no, oh, can you see the, the mouse? I hope so. Yeah, Anyways. you can see. Okay, perfect. Um, then yeah, if you take a look here, uh, you've got this vector. This vector contains two hash maps. Uh, these hash maps uh, represent very roughly what's in my database uh, for job postings. So in this case, there'd be two job postings. You have one for senior software engineer and one for webmaster. Um, and then among other attributes, it has these two, detected at and disabled at. So detected at means when we're crawling the job boards, uh, when we detect a new one, we record that date here. Um, so this was found on the 1st of February and then webmaster was found on the 13th of February. And then when they get taken off, uh, maybe that means that the company is, uh, you know, <clears throat> in the late stages of interviews for someone, or they decided that they don't want this position to be filled after all, uh, or they just don't have the money for it, whatever. Um, that's what disable that is. So it's been taken off. In this case, senior software engineer was taken off on the 13th of February. So we bring that over to here. So what I wanted for a report format was something that looked like this, a hash map where the keys are those dates. So we have the 1st of February and the 13th of February. Uh, and then the values to those keys are another hash map. And those contain uh, pause and neg. So pause means uh, the number of jobs on this day increased by one. And then on the 13th, it increased by one and it also went down by one. So corresponding to whatever's in there. Um, this probably isn't terribly interesting right now, but uh, with a lot more job postings, it is. But OK. The, the main thing is I have my inputs defined and I have a general idea of what I want the output to look like. So uh, how do we get, uh, how do we move forward with this? Um, I think this is a pretty standard workflow. For me, it is at least. Um, I just get started by using basic closure core functions. So uh, I have my list of uh, rows from the database and I toss it into a thread last macro. Uh, and then I just do a bunch of stuff like map filter, reduce, whatever. Uh, and if it looks good, it works, it does its thing. I, I eventually move stuff to transducers um, or you use, I guess, the eduction function specifically. Um, and then I create transformation functions with very clear names to, to try to, you know, communicate to future Paul what my intent was. Um, and future Paul, generally speaking, tends to appreciate when that happens. It doesn't happen every time, but when it does, you know, it's, it's appreciated. Uh, I won't talk about transducers today, actually, though. Uh, we'll just move right into this uh, kind of rough closure.core uh, uh, function list. And uh, so this is the first implementation. So I'll start at the top with a fake data set. You don't have to worry too much about what this is. Um, it's basically uh, uh, just uh, creating like a, a pretend set of data uh, where I have a million different uh, job openings. Uh, that either take this form, detected at and disabled at this, these days, or this one here. Um, and then I'll move to the bottom. Um, and then the, the whole point of doing this is to see how long this takes. So we've got elapsed time, blah, 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 blah. Um, and that comes from this time function. 
And then what I'm doing is just timing the generate report on this fake data set. Um, generate report is kind of the meat of what we're looking at here. It takes one argument item and then it uh, moves forward by doing this. It's, so th this is a bit tricky, so bear with me here. Um, we have two different keys that we're going to look at for each of these rows, rows, right? We've got detected at and disabled at. And that's going to come up, uh, that's going to be tossed into this get key frequency private function that's defined up here along with the items to eventually yield us what we want like this. So uh, when we, when we uh, go with detected at, uh, that means there's going to be a pause. And then when we go with disabled at, there's going to be a neg. Eventually, these get merged in with each other, uh, which is why this apply merge with merge uh, exists. Um, if that's confusing, don't worry too much about it. I'm about to jump into the heart of this thing now, which is the get key frequency. So in the beginning steps, we just have the result key. So again, if it's disabled at, it's going to be neg. Otherwise, it's going to be pause. Um, and then you also have to figure out what we're going to be uh, iterating over. Um, so not everything has a disabled at uh, value, right? So this one does not. Um, so we just have to filter all the items uh, for which ones do have disabled at, and then we'll operate on that. And now here's that thread last macro I was talking about. We have our item sequence. Uh, we're going to take all the values that correspond to whatever key is being passed in. Um, so it's either going to be disabled at or detected at. We run frequencies on it, um, which basically uh, just takes any sequence and then tells you how often a value in that sequence appears. The values are dates, actually, right? So uh, the next thing uh, just turns that date value into a, a, a two-member uh, vector, where the first is the date, so the first key more or less of the frequencies and then you've got the result key value so this would be colon pause uh, as a keyword and then this would be whatever uh, value over one comes in through frequencies then at the end of the day we shove it right back into a hash map so that is our get key frequency function um and then yeah so this is what we come up with uh, 643 milliseconds to get 100 or 1 million rows done. Uh, I guess the main question is, is that a good result or a bad result? Um, I would argue it is a bad result. Um, I say this because, I mean, 1 million jobs, the first question is like, we're, we're running these benchmarks with a lot of assumptions, but is that a realistic number of jobs? And I would say it is. Um, for example, Y Combinator, has uh, in their portfolio Dropbox, they have Airbnb, Reddit, uh, all different kinds of companies, uh, all that are hiring all the freaking time. So we're keeping track of all the job data, not just what's available right now. So I think with that in mind, 1 million jobs being tracked is definitely within the realm of, of possibility. Um, but you know, we, we were given this figure 643 milliseconds uh, so what else do we know uh, about that? Like, what, what, when is it good and when is it not good? I'm basing this on usability engineering, which is a book from uh, Jakob Nielsen in 1993. Um, what we want is instantaneous, right? So um, 0 0.1 milliseconds or less, so 100 milliseconds or less. Uh, for users, that's instantaneous, uh, or so he claims. Keep in mind, this is written in 1993, so... Uh, in the smartphone age, I can imagine that things might have changed, but I feel like I, I kind of agree with this today, um, so I'll stick with it. And then 100 milliseconds to one second uh, keeps a user's flow of thought. So if, if a user's not able to keep their flow of thought, that's absolutely in the disaster zone, and that's where I start really worrying about what's going on. Uh, but anyway, um, yeah, so that's what's going on here. Uh, so if we're not happy with 643 milliseconds, uh, then we ought to ask, what else can we do? Um, so, okay. We have a few different options here. We've got closure core reducers. Uh, and what is this? This is a drop and replacement for uh, a lot of the closure.core functions. Uh, and they get applied in parallel. You also have pmap, and that's also in closure.core. Uh, and it basically is the same thing as map. Um, except it gets applied in parallel, depending on the number of cores on your computer. Uh, and it does that using futures. 
Um, and then I learned this other technique that's really cool that I'm really happy to share with everyone uh, from Paul Butcher. Uh, it's paginate all and then merging uh, with a PMAP. Um, I'll show you this in a second, but just to be clear about what I won't talk about uh, is Java interop. So if we're really worried about speed, that's probably the right way to go. But this is a closure talk. I won't talk about Java stuff. And then the other option is just giving up in caching. Um, I hate caching. Uh, Cache invalidation is one of those hard computer science problems. So yeah, I mean, uh, that, that tends to be something that I get really aggressive about. And when I'm working on a team, I just don't like caching. I, I want to compute as much as possible. Um, so yeah, that's where we're at. Anyways, like I said, we'll focus again on paginate all and uh, merging with PMAP. So, okay. Uh, I'm creating this new function called batch generate report. It takes in the, the, like the set of items, the job postings, uh, but we're also tossing in a batch size now. And basically what's gonna happen here is you have the thread last of items. Uh, we're gonna do a partition all batch size. And basically that means that uh, if items is a million rows and uh, the batch size is a thousand, partition all makes 1000 batches of 1000 jobs. So it's a, it becomes a sequence of subsequences. There's a thousand subsequences that are all of size 1000. Um, we, we also got PMAP here. So that's again, that's the parallel map uh, with a generate report. That's that function that we uh, created a few slides ago. And uh, this could be a bit funky. We've got reduce uh, with merge with and then a nested merge with in front of there with a plus. Don't worry too much about that. I swear it works and it gives us the result that we want. And uh, just taking a look at here, you know, we haven't changed much. We've just batched what was going, what was being uh, iterated on like sequentially before. And we have huge time savings. So uh, if we go in with batch size 1000, uh, it's basically been knocked down in half. So it was like what, 643 before. Now we're down to 319, but you can toy around with the batch sizes and then you'll see that 10,000 batch size 10,000 is going to be what gives us a pretty good result. Like that's the ballpark we probably want to play in. Um, so that's pretty cool. But I think I might regret this, but I'll just mess around uh, in real time with uh, my uh, actual code and I've got a REPL open here. Um, so let's see. Let me slide this down a little bit. Okay, um, so this is really all the same code that you saw on the slides. That there's the fake data set. Here's get key frequency. Here's generate reports. Um, I've got a lot of uh, benchmarking uh, printing going on here, so ignore that. And then the batch generate report that we talked about a second ago. So that's all here. Everything that we've seen that you see in this uh, buffer came from what you've seen already in the slideshow. Uh, so we're going to mess around. First, let's just print out the benchmarks right now as is. Um, I guess my CPUs are cycling on other stuff right now. So now the elapsed times have all kind of gone up a bit. But the same trend is pretty clear. When you just iterate on the, the data set itself, you've got 880. Uh, and then roughly gets cut in half. I guess that's well under half in this case. But uh, and, and then we have batch size 10,000. Uh, batch size 10,000. And... That is the speed winner right now. But what's fun is we can now get started with messing around with the maps. Um, so what happens if we do this? I'm just going to add one letter to generate report, and that's PMAP. So OK, remember, this is something that is going to be mapping on two different items uh, or two different uh, like members of this vector. What happens in this case? Let's compile and see. OK, and let's pull this up so we can actually see the numbers. So all of a sudden, generate report is not doing very badly, right? It was like 800 something before, now it's at 464. Um, so PMAP looks like in this case, it works pretty well for generate report. Um, can we replicate the success elsewhere? Uh, let's go ahead and go up. What happens if we go here? Here's that map key. So item sec, as we remember, it's either all the items or it's all the items that contain uh, disabled at. So that's a lot of items. It, it could be a million. Uh, and we're going to call a map on key, right? 
Um, well, let's do it with PMAP instead. Oh, sorry, just to be clear, uh, I have eight cores on this computer. So let's take a look at what happens with PMAP here. Um, let's do this so we can see it as it generates. Okay, it's 1.6 seconds, 1.5, two seconds, and then 1.8 seconds. Um, so what's going on here? Why, why did this work out so well with PMAP for this one did not? Um, so uh, I have no uh, proof for this other than uh, empirical evidence, but it seems like PMAP is best suited for situations where you have uh, function calls that are each pretty lengthy in time. Um, so like this is calling get key frequency, which is that whopper function up here. Um, so that takes some time and we could just do it on, on uh, two different cores, right? But uh, PMAP here is being called on, uh, you're just taking one key uh, inside of each hash map, but a million times. So it's a very different kind of operation. Um, I guess PMAP is not well suited for that situation. Um, okay, so that's that's our play with PMAP for now. I will continuously uh, nervously recompile this and we can see the numbers as it goes. Um, so the next thing, uh, closure core reducers. I don't know if how many of you all have messed with clo uh, closure core reducers, but um, like I said, in a lot of situations, it can be a drop-in replacement. So what happens if we do that here? Uh, we know that PMAP didn't work well with the keys or taking a key from a hash map. What about closure core reducers? Okay, so we take a look at these numbers. And I mean, actually the, the bash ones haven't changed, but the generate, the generate report one uh, is getting faster and faster with this. So it really like this one. What about here? What about for this map? Okay, it doesn't seem like it's changed much here. If I try the PMAP, maybe it's a more uh, operationally heavy function. Just barely it's faster, at least for the generate report. The B1K, B10K, and B100K haven't changed much. Um, and then the, one of the last places where we can also apply it is here with a filter. So what happens if we do that? All right. So we do that, and now we're in uh, sub 300 territory. That is really cool. It's not 0 0.1 milliseconds cool, but it is pretty cool. Um, and then when we take a look at this, I'm starting to feel like we don't actually need this batching technique, although it is a good technique to know. And I would probably just stick with um, using this uh, get key frequency uh, if, if I were to implement this in production. And uh, I guess the other thing we could try is uh, closure core reducers reduce uh, instead of the closure core reduce. And let's see what that looks like. Okay, so that looks like it hasn't changed much either. Um, and yeah, so that's pretty much what I've uh, come up with in terms of messing around with different maps. Um, let me go back to my presentation and show you my conclusions. Uh, my two conclusions are that there's no one size fits all mapping strategy. Different mapping strategies uh, or scenarios require different mapping strategies. Um, and uh, while, again, like my PMAP generalization of where it's better for longer lasting functions, I'm not entirely sure that's true. So please, second conclusion, try each one uh, and keep testing in a REPL until you're happy with uh, what the results are. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. Thanks for listening to what I have to say. And uh, I'll happily take questions and hopefully I might even be able to answer some.